It's the day after the Super Bowl. I've got the day off. Now, what does a home brewer do when he's got a bit of spare time? I've got it. Let's brew a beer. That's right, folks. It's time for another brew day. This time, I'm going to do almost the exact same recipe as last time, which was kind of a smash, um, but I'm using two malts and one hop. But this time, we're using Chinook hops. Um, the Chinook hops, they have a very West Coast ale sort of a smell to them. And so if you're familiar with all of those um, West Coast pale ales, it smells very much like the hops you'd get in that. So I'm looking forward to how this one's going to taste. Um, so yeah, it's almost exactly the same as last time. Um, let's take a look at the ingredients. So this is the grain bill, um, a kilogram of Maris Otter and 100 grams of Vienna malt. Then we've got our three hop additions, uh, six grams um, Chinook hops at 15 minutes into the boil, another six grams at 45 minutes into the boil, and 15 grams at the end, at flame out. And we've got some yeast. So we've also got all this equipment here, which again, all of it has been sterilized. I've actually got my meat thermometer out because that hopefully will be a bit quicker than the old glass one, which takes forever. Got extra star sand over here with some bits and bobs floating in it to keep them sterilized. Also, difference, I've got a bit of boiling water there that's just cooling off. Um, last time I did the brew, I didn't quite have enough liquid, um, or as much liquid as I like, so I've got a little bit of there just cooling down in case I need to top up when I put it into the carboy. So, let's crack on. All right, so. Water's now up to temperature. Just checked it with the old meat thermometer, which is much, much quicker. Gotta like that. So now we're gonna add my grains. In we go. Lovely jabbly. Let's get it all mixed in. Quick temperature check. See if we need to heat it up a little before we wrap it up. Yep, that's dropped all the way down to 58. So I'm just gonna give it a quick blast of heat. To get it back up to 66. Because that's my mashing temperature, that's the temperature I want the mash to be at. Hopefully, when we stick the lid on and we wrap it in the towel, it won't lose too much heat. Just keeping the grain constantly moving so it doesn't any of it doesn't burn or stick to the pan. That would be disastrous. Leave some horrible taste, taste in my beer that I just don't want to be there. So there we are, 66 degrees, bang on the lid. Couple of tea towels around it. So, keep that nice and insulated. I might give that an occasional stir um, every 15 minutes or so. Basically, just going to leave that for an hour now. So, yeah, I'll check back in in an hour when we're ready to sparge. Okay, so it's been an hour. Time to mash out. So again, what we're doing when we're mashing out is we are going to put some heat underneath the grains. We're going to rise the temperature up to 77 degrees. And that is the mashing out step. 
whilst I'm here, I'm also going to start these two off so we can get those up to sparging temperature. And let's get this on. Now it's important when you're mashing out that you keep the grains moving at all times. You don't really want them sticking to the bottom and burning and adding that kind of character to your beer. Slowly getting there. There we go. Let's give these waters a bit of a temperature check. Okay, they're slowly coming up to temperature. So I'm just going to give the um, brew pot a wash. We'll be back in a minute for sparging. All right, so sparge water is now at temperature. So let's get sparging. So I'm starting to reach the limits of this, what this bucket can hold. So get the wort into my boil pan. And I'll re-sparge the rest of the water with the remaining grains momentarily. All right, let's get this moved over. Put that in there a sec. into the boil pan let's reattach the bag for our final sparge last bit of water goes in We'll drain it again, and that should be all the wort collected. In fact, what I'm going to do is this. Then I don't have to hold it, aren't I, clever dick? Put this in the brew pot. Got to be careful because I'm reaching the limits of this. There we are. So, time to start the boil. So I'm gonna leave that to get to the hot break point. Tidy up a bit, but you don't wanna watch that. So we'll come back at the point of hot break where we can turn it down to a nice rolling simmer and then we'll do all our hop additions. So here it is. We've reached the point of hot break. Just going to turn the heat down slightly so we get a nice gentle rolling boil. It's always important whenever you're doing a boiling of your warts that you leave it uncovered. What's happening here is some of the proteins and other stuff in your beer is boiling off. So you don't want the lid on because you don't want to capture it. It wants to get boiled off. So that's going to simmer away now for 15 minutes and then we're going to have our first hop edition right it's been 15 minutes time to add our first edition of hops in they go all right We've got 15 minutes left in the boil time for some more hops Right, so that is the boil over. So flame goes out. Final hop addition goes in. Lid goes on. And this is going to go in the water bath to cool down. Once it's cool, we'll get it in there and then we'll have some lovely, lovely beer in a few weeks. 
All right, so time kind of got away from me towards the end of the brew. Um, so I haven't filmed me uh, putting it in the demijohn. So what are you going to do? Once the brew had cooled down to pitching temperature, got it all into the carboy with the yeast, give it a good old shake around, and it's now just sat in the corner awaiting fermentation. Let's have a look at it, shall we? Right, so here it is, all wrapped up. Again, the wrapping up's not to do with heat, it's just to keep the light off it. So there we are. One beer starting to ferment. Hopefully we'll get some nice fermentation over the next couple of days. And then I'll rack it into secondary and tell you what it tastes like. So that's it. That uh, was the brew day. Um, it was a good, it was fun. Um, really enjoyed it. It was a very simple recipe again, just as I'm learning my craft. So I'll keep you posted on what's going on with the Chinook smash. I've got my um, Cascade smash in the corner over there. That is going to um, be bottled in the next couple of days. I'll film all that. Um, so yeah, stick around. I've got plenty of videos um, coming up. Also, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Give me one of them thumbs up and help me up them Google rankings. Uh, check me out on Twitter. Check me out on Facebook. Check out the blog. And just continue to be wonderful, wonderful folks. Cheers for checking me out. This week, this week, it's like I do a brew every week. This time, I'm going to be doing the exact same recipe as last time, which was a, a smash-ish. Hey! Shut it! It's just a bloody cat.